afternoon. Uh, so I, uh, I don't yet give you back the homework. I was a bit sick, and for the same reason, I don't have new homework. But I, you will still get homework uh, maybe tomorrow, and you will also get back your homework. Okay. What? Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll just give some small thing. Yeah. Okay, I still have to decide. But to just one, to have at least one more exercise. No. Okay. Uh, I think we can start. Can we? Yeah. Okay. So we had been uh, talking about um, rel relative homology. I recall that uh, we had, um, so A was a subspace of X, the topological spaces. Then we have, but in a natural way, the uh, N chains, singular N chains in A are contained in the N chains in X. And we can contain, con uh, consider the relative N chains, which is just the quotient. And then in the usual way, one has the, the, the differential D. In the usual way, one associates to this the relative homology. And we had seen that, uh, say, writing I for the embedding from A to X, we have uh, the long exact homology sequence. So. So this was something like, you know, you have some goes from Hn to A, Hn X, Hn of Xa. And then we have this. This is the map given by the push forward by I. And here we have some boundary map to Hn minus 1 of A. And it goes on like this, a long exact sequence. And one thing <coughs> that uh, is useful is to know how to compute these, how to simplify the computation of this, because it's given to us in this rather complicated way. And this is given by the excision theorem. Which says that, again, if x is a topological space, and z and a are subspaces of x, such that the closure of Z is contained in the interior of A. So we have here X, we have here A, and we have here Z. Then we can cut out Z from both X and A and get the same homology. So then the HN of X, A is isomorphic, Hn of x minus c, a minus c. <coughs> OK. And uh, this, uh, this uses this uh, theorem of the cover, which I um, want to recall. So we had defined uh, Cn, so if, uh, say, a and B are subsets of X such that uh, the closures uh, <coughs> um, such that uh, the interiors cover X. So interior of A union the interior of B is equal to X. Then we had seen or then I had claimed that uh, you know, so we can consider this what I was called Cn of A plus B, which was supposed to be uh, was defined to be the set of all uh, n chains, uh, which are linear, such that every simplex is either contained in A or in B. So this is a set of all. Uh, um, some 
sigma a sigma times, or maybe I just write some i a i sigma i, i equals 1 to n for some n. And uh, the a i are elements in z. And uh, sigma i is a map from delta n to x with either sigma i of delta n is contained in A or sigma i of delta n is contained in B. And by the way, you know, notice that by definition we have that cn of A is contained in cn of x and cn of B is contained in cn of x. And if you think of what this means, we just have that cn of a plus b is just the sum, no, not the direct sum, the sum. So these are all uh, you know, formal sums, which can be written as sum of a, uh, of a formal sum with uh, things in a and with things in b. Okay, and then the statement was that um, um, so the the relative homology so um, so the, homo the homology so. I can just say it like that. If I take uh, the, the homology of the chain complex of X with D, which is just the homology of X, is equal to the homology of uh, So this was the theorem of the cover. So you can compute the homology of a space by looking at uh, uh, chains such that their simplices are, that each of the simplices uh, is contained either in A or in B. So there are no simplices which go over both. Okay. And then I wanted to say one more thing, which we had... Um, Uh, maybe uh, I think briefly said at the end. So if um, we had introduced an exercise, the relative homology, uh, the reduced homology, I will not repeat, um, You know, one thing that we had seen is that if uh, X is path connected, the reduced the zero th reduced homology is zero. And um, then uh, it's a remark, and uh, not difficult to prove that the long exact homology sequence. also holds in reduced homology. So, the, so recall that for n bigger than zero, the reduced homology is the same as the usual homology, so there's nothing there. But for, <coughs> uh, but as I said, if uh, the space is path connected, then the zeroth reduced homology is just zero. And that makes it easier to apply the long exact sequence because you know, most of the spaces you look at are path connected and then it starts with zero in the beginning. So you don't have to have so complicated uh, arguments. Okay. And now we want to be more or less, I will talk a bit long, but anyway, now we are at the point of continuing where we were. So I wanted to prove this invariance of dimension. For this, I actually will have to use a 
theorem I will only use, uh, will only prove later. So we'll prove below. The following that, uh, I mean, I don't know whether I am. So this is, uh, I don't know, I call it theorem, but that's maybe nonsense. Um, that if I take HK of SN, this is equal to zero. So SN is the, the N uh, sphere. No? Okay, the usual N sphere. So this will be zero if uh, N is different from zero, if, if K is different from zero and N, and Z if K is equal to zero or N. And for the reduced homology, uh, it's clear so that, uh, you know, the, this thing is connected, so reduced homology will be zero also if k is equal to zero. So we have only two cases. So this I will prove later, but now I want to use it to prove the invariance of dimension. So which says that we have, if you have open subsets of Rn and Rm, which are homeomorphic, then n must be equal to m. So the dimension of open subsets is preserved by homeomorphism, okay, which is something which is maybe seems obvious to you, but it's not so clear how, why it should be true, and why you can now prove it using homology. So, so let u subset Rn and v subset Rm be open and non-empty. and u homeomorphic to v. Then it follows that n is equal to m. You know, I think there are examples of continuous uh, uh, subjective maps from, say, r to r2 or things like that. So you can see that this is not a, but if they are homeomorphisms, then this cannot happen. The, pres the dimension is preserved. And this we do using this relative homology and the excision theorem. So we take a point, so we have assumed that x and that u and v are non-empty. Obviously, otherwise, there's also no statement. You cannot certainly conclude anything from talking about the empty set. So let x be a point in u. And now we look at the relative homology hk of u, u minus x. We can use excision. Um, um, what is it? Um, I claim this is equal to HK of RN. So we were, U was in RN, yeah. RN without X. So we just take, uh, you know, in the excision theorem, we take Z equal to Rn minus u, and then um, we see that uh, the excision theorem applies because uh, <coughs> because this is uh, uh, you know this is contained the, <coughs> the closure of this, or which is actually closed, is contained in the interior of uh, both sets of of Rn minus x. So then we can apply the long exact homology sequence. Uh, 
and I will apply it to the reduced homology. To, I mean, it works. One can also do otherwise, but it gets slightly simpler if one use reduced homology. So I take H k of R n maps to H k of um, R n comma R n without x goes to now the boundary map H k minus one of R n minus x goes to H k minus one of R n and then it goes on. So if you look, uh, okay, if you look at this, um, R n is contractible, so all the homology except the zeroth homology is zero, the zeroth homology is z, but you can also, if you take the reduced homology, then just all the reduced homology is zero, because it's path connected and the higher homology is zero. So this is zero for all k, and this is also zero for all k. So we find that this relative homology is the same as this. So for all k, we have that hk to the relative homology is equal to the homology of this. But now you have that uh, Sn minus 1 is a deformation retract. of i n minus x. I mean, you could assume uh, you just, uh, <clears throat> or at least uh, is a, I mean, you can assume that the point x is zero. I mean, it's just by shifting, so assume that. Then you just uh, have here the s n minus 1. You have here the point x. No? And, uh, you know, you just can, um, if you, are, you just make the, the homotopy from the identity on Sn minus 1 to the identity on Rn minus the point by, you know, if you are inside, you kind of pull here with a certain speed so that at 0 you, uh, you, you are where you are and at, the, at 1 you arrive here. And if you are outside, you do it here all in, along straight lines going to infinity. And you find that you have a you get in this way a homotopy equivalence between the identity on Sn minus 1 and the identity on Rn minus x. So it, it follows that this here is actually equal to Hk minus 1 of Sn minus 1, which we know. So we find that Hk, what? What is the problem? Um, so we find that uh, HK of, uh, say, now I go back to where we were, U, uh, U without X, is equal to, um, to HK minus 1 of SN minus 1, the reduced homology, which is equal to, according to what we have written here to 0 when k is different from n and z if k is equal to n. Okay. So if we take this uh, relative homology, it will remember the number n because it's the only uh, part where the homology is not n. So if, um, so, so if, f from u to v is a homeomorphism, uh, then it induces an isomorphism uh, from, say, h k of um, u, u minus x to h k of v, v minus 
f of x. And as you see, according to what we just proved, this is zero. I mean, both sides at zero unless n is equal to the. Uh, <coughs> so this is this one is zero um, and z, and this is if n if uh, k is equal to n, and this one is zero or z if k is equal to m, and these things are always supposed to be equal, so it means n is equal to m. Okay, so this was this application. So I hope that. Uh, so now we want to. So this was one small application of the excision theorem and the long exact homology sequence. Um, so now we want to come to a kind of even a somewhat more useful tool to directly find an exact sequence for the homology without talking about relative homology. <coughs> and this is the Meyer-Viator sequence. And this is in some sense maybe the most uh, useful thing that we will introduce in order to compute homology. So this is the, the Meyer-Viator sequence. This is after <laughs> two mathematicians, one called Meyer, the other one, Vietoris. I don't know very much about Meyer, but Vietoris uh, died very recently at the age of 105 or something years. And I think he still was publishing papers uh, until very soon before, so he didn't have a long career. <coughs> but this, I think, he did when he was rather young. <laughs> so, so. I mean, this is the Meyer-Vitor sequence. So let x be a topological space. A and B open subsets of x. And we assume, I mean, it's just an open cover. So x is equal to A union B. And I, just for security, I, I mean, to have the notation, I introduce all the inclusions. So I take uh, EA from A intersected B for A, the inclusion. IB from A intersected B to B. And uh, then we also have, say, GA from A to X, the inclusion, and JB from B to X, the inclusion. So thus that we can see what all the maps are. So then we have a long exact sequence. So somehow goes on in the usual way, Hn of A intersected B. So it's always, so all the, the maps except for the boundary map are given by inclusions. So here this will be, this goes to Hn of A plus Hn of B. And this is just by, by the two inclusions, so in so IA, IB. So the map from this to this one is the push forward by IA, and the one to the other one is the push forward by IB. And then we have uh, the map to X. And 
And here we basically take the difference. So we take, the, again, the push forwards by these two inclusion, but we take the difference. So we take, say, JB star minus GA star. So if we have an, a class alpha here, we send it to JB star of alpha, so the push forward uh, minus JB star of alpha. And this would be a class here. And then we have the boundary map delta, which will, again, as usual, bring us to Hn minus 1 of A intersected B. And it goes on like this. OK. So now, in this case, we want to give some kind of a proof. Um, this again follows from the uh, theorem of the cover that we had. That's why I repeated it. So the, the claim, so the proof, we have a short exact sequence. of chain complexes so 0 goes to c star of a intersected b goes to c star of a plus c star of b goes to c star of a plus b goes to 0, where this map I call phi and this one psi, and phi is just uh, you know, i a star i b star. So if I have a, if I take class alpha here, so phi of alpha, if I have a a chain, so a linear combination of singular simplices in A intersected B, I can view them as singular simplices in A and also singular simplices in B. And I just take, you know, the sum. I mean, I take it here and here. So this is equal to alpha, alpha. And um, here I can, for psi, it's the same thing. I mean, again, just translate this J. So that means if I take psi of alpha, um, I <clears throat> if I have a, a singular chain in A, I can view it as a singular chain in X. Or I mean, I can, and I can just say I take. Uh, so I have now here have two things: alpha beta, and I take the difference beta minus alpha. And why is that an exact sequence? So it's kind of clear that this is, these are all maps of chain complexes. It's just, you know, the D is always the same D as we had before. This is the restriction of the D in X on C star X. And the, the D on C star B is the restriction of that to B. The, to, you, know, it's, you know, the D is always the same. So it's certainly, uh, these are all chain maps. So, and the first, so phi is certainly injective because, you know, we know that according to the definition we just have that C star of A intersected B is just a subset of C star of A and also of C star of B. And the map here is just the inclusion. I mean, the inclusion is called... Uh, I A lower star, but it is just, you know, <clears throat> just the inclusion. And um, uh, now, what else? So it's obviously injective. So the composition is obviously zero. If I take psi composed with phi, so. So psi with phi is zero. 
because if I take psi composed with phi and apply it to some class alpha, so what do we do? I mean, we first send it to alpha alpha, and then we subtract, subtract it from itself. OK, so it cannot really be more obvious. <coughs> and now, so <coughs> but we want to say that the image is precisely equal to the kernel. So if we have alpha beta, which lies in C N A plus C N B, if this is in the kernel of psi, what does it mean? It means that beta minus alpha is equal to 0. So it means beta is equal to alpha. But uh, alpha likes in Cn of A, beta likes in Cn of B. So it lies in the intersection of the two. The section of the two is Cn of A intersected B, if you look at the definition. And so uh, we see that uh, then it is equal to phi. So okay. and then finally, the subjectivity is by definition. If you look at the, we have just observed that, you know, we had seen that C n of A and C n of B are both submodules, I mean subrings sub of Cn of x. No? These are all the simplices where this is contained here. And by definition, and by definition, we have Cn of A plus B is equal to Cn of A plus Cn of B, no, inside Cn of x. Or if you want to, and so therefore, and this is precisely the image, which by definition is the image of this map. But to see it more explicitly, we can also say, if uh, so, let uh, more explicitly, if we take an element alpha in Cn of A plus B, uh, then we can write it as alpha is equal to sum over sum i, uh, alpha i sigma i plus sum over sum j, beta j tau j, where alpha i and beta j are some integers and Sigma i is a map from delta n to A, and uh, uh, tau j is a map from delta n to B, because that's precisely how this Cn of A plus B was defined, that it's all uh, uh, n chains, which can be written as, uh, you know, where all the, the simplices map either to A or to B. And I've now just divided them in such a way that I first write those who map to A, and then I write those who map to B, that I can certainly do. But that just means that uh, alpha is equal to psi of what? Well, of, um, uh, you know, what do we, are we supposed to do? We're supposed to, <coughs> to write this as a difference of uh, these two, so I could say um, sum i alpha i sigma i comma minus sum j beta j tau j, because if we take the difference between these two, this is precisely alpha. 
Okay, so the map is also subjective. So thus we can apply the law. So, so now apply the snake lemma. And this precisely gives us the long exact homology sequence. Okay. Yes? Which one? I have not understood the question. I said the last line. Yeah. Let's say if phi of alpha beta is beta minus alpha. We get alpha. We make the minus in front of it. Alpha. Why is it called? Ah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK. So I, I made it the wrong way around. Yeah. OK. So there was a sign error. Anyway, the, what matters is the, <laughs> the principle. But yeah. But I understand it's a <coughs> okay. So now I want to also state without uh, proof, but it's not difficult. It would be uh, that uh, the following remark, which is the same as for the exact homology sequence, it also ho holds in reduced homology. So the uh, <coughs> and again. This is practical because you have less case distinctions for the low homology groups. So the Maya Virtus sequence. Also for reduced homology. And that's essentially an exercise to modify the proof here. OK, now we want to give some examples. So first, we have to prove the statement that I made at the beginning of the lecture that computes the homology of the n-sphere. Now, I was using this for this uh, uh, invariance of dimension, so it, uh, I should better prove it. So we have the n-sphere. So we have, uh, as you know, have Sn set of all x0 to xn in Rn plus 1, such that the sum of the squares of the coordinates is equal to 1. And um, so we want to compute the homology. So the claim was, after all, that uh, so I just say it for reduced homology hk of Sn is equal to Z if K is equal to N and 0 otherwise. OK, let's do it. <coughs> so we want to use the Maya Virtua sequence. So we write it as a union of Sn as a union of two open subsets of which the homology is easier to compute. So we write Sn equal to A union B, where A is equal to Sn minus, say, I could call it the north pole. So N is the point, uh, the point uh, 0, 0, 1. And um, B is Sn minus the south pole. And I think you can imagine uh, which one that is. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so we have this. This picture that so we have here the, the sphere. Sn, and uh, so here we somehow have the North Pole, and here we somehow have the South Pole. And we have, um, for A, we leave out this one point. For B, we leave out this one point. 
And then we also consider A intersected B, where we just leave out both points. So now I say that A and B are contractible and A intersected B is homotopy equivalent uh, to S n minus one. So maybe you can imagine this I will, so I make this some kind of exercise. I mean, I, that means I don't carry out the details. <coughs> um, so check this. So we have, um, so basically we can, I want to claim, so we can um, retract. So we have a, um, so S is a neighborhood retract. of um, uh, A, N is a neighborhood retract of B, and the, there's N minus one, which is the equator. X zero to X N minus one in uh, N plus one, so zero. such that sum xi squared is equal to one is, um, is a neighborhood retract of A intersected B. And it's clear that E is homeomorphic to Sn minus one. Yeah, a neighborhood retract. So S is a neighborhood retract of A. I introduced the last time what a neighborhood retract is. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so I want to, it's an exercise, I say, but I, you know, the exercise is just to carry out the detail. If you look at it, for instance, for A, so how does it look like? We, we have this picture. So here's the South Pole and we kind of throw, we take out the North Pole. There's one point missing. So we can just, you know, make the kind of the homotopy by pulling it down along great circles. So, you know, each point lies on a great circle and we just, you know, shorten the great, you know, we just pull down according to, uh, so if at n, n equals zero, it's the identity of this thing. At uh, uh, the point one in the homotopy, it will be here. And in between, we just, Every, for every point, we go half the way from the point until S along the great circle. And obviously for this is, uh, so this, and for, for B the same. And you would have to write down the formula to see that everything is continuous. And for A intersected B, it's uh, basically the same story, we have now this thing, and we are now missing the North Pole and the South Pole. And again, we can just take, you know, we can again just pull down along great circles, but only until the middle. So if we have any point anywhere here, at, uh, you know, if you are at the homotopy for T, you go, you know, so and so much along the way until you reach here. You can just write down the formula. And this gives you a homotopy uh, between the identity on this thing and the identity on the equator. Okay, so you have to write down the formula to see that it is a homotopy, uh, in a homotopy equivalence. And now, given this, we can apply the Meyer-Virtual sequence. I haven't done this very 
symmetrically to apply the Meyer Viator sequence. So what do we have? Uh, I mean, I wiped it out, but we have at some point we have H K of A plus H K of B maps to H K of S N maps maps to H K minus one of uh, uh, a intersected B, and um, maybe one more to uh, HK minus one of A plus HK minus one of B. Okay, so, and now we, we do everything with the loose tomology. So in principle, we only have to put it here because the other ones will anyway be the same. But for any K, we do it with reduced tomology to make it easier. So <clears throat> we know that A and, <clears throat> A and B are contractible. So their reduced tomology is all zero. So this is zero plus zero. And this is 0 plus 0. OK. So we find that HK reduced of SN is equal to HK minus 1 reduced of, well, A intersected B, which we know is, uh, hom which has the same hom homology groups as Sn minus 1. And now <clears throat> we know, so <clears throat> for instance, we have that S0 is two points. The set consisting of the points 1 and minus 1. And you can easily compute that the reduced homology of a set of two points is Z. So HK zero if k is different from zero because it's just points. We know that uh, for a point, the, all the higher homology vanishes. You have a union of, of uh, path components. It's the whole homology is just the sum. So we have, <coughs> and then we take the reduced homology, so we have one sum and less, and z if k is equal to zero. And uh, the statement says that, uh, therefore, by induction, by this formula, uh, the, uh, the result follows. Thus, by induction, H K of S N is equal to zero K different from N Z K is equal to N. I mean, one could have done the whole argument also without reduced homology, but with the usual homology. But then it's always a bit complicated because you do not have that just things are zero, but there's some z's and so on, and you will have some maps of which you have to show the injective or something. So it always is a shortcut to use uh, the reduced homology because uh, if something is path connected, the reduced homology, the zero th reduced homology is zero, and that somehow makes things easier. Okay, so this was this. Example. I want to make a couple of small applications of this, which I think you already had done for uh, n equal one using uh, the fundamental group of 
the circle. And we can now do it for all the corresponding thing for all spheres. So we have the following uh, corollary. Um, what? Um, <coughs> S n minus one, so we write write d n to be the unit sphere, uh, so the unit disk in dimension n. So this is the set of all x zero. Well, maybe I write now x one to x n. Um, well, maybe write that. No, whatever it doesn't matter. In R n, such that the sum of the x i squared is smaller or equal to 1. So this is just the, the unit disk. And Sn is the, now I, I, with, with Sn minus 1, we, we take, uh, we also, you know, changing the numeration, this is, uh, okay. Is the boundary. And the claim is that uh, um, uh, Sn minus 1 is not a retract retract of the n. And the proof is. Uh, I think something you already had with HOMO uh, is very similar to what you had for homology groups. So assume we have such a thing. So let let uh, f from dn to Sn minus 1 be a, a re retraction. So, so that means it's continuous, and f restricted to S n minus one is the identity on S n minus one. <coughs> um, and we also look at the inclusion to the n be the inclusion. Then you actually had an exercise um, I mean you had an exercise which you have already solved, which says that I lower star say from um, h k of s n minus one to h k of d n is an um, is injective for all um, k. Now, for simplicity, I maybe will assume, uh, I mean, I either I would again have to do something with the do somology, or otherwise I assume that n is bigger or equal to 2. It's an exercise, uh, uh, I mean, in the, in the following, it's an exercise to conclude uh, if n is equal to 1. So in this case, we see that, um, for instance, if we do this for the n minus first homology, we have that i lower star is a map from h n minus 1 of s n minus 1 to h n minus 1 of the n. But uh, uh, this one is equal to z. And this one is obviously equal to zero because dn is contractible. I mean, everybody can write a homotopy which contracts this thing to a point. And so this is a contradiction. Obviously, there can be no injective map from z to zero. And so we deduce that. Uh, um, there can be no such retraction. And from this, uh, one gets in the standard way the 
for our fixed point theorem that I think you also have seen already in the case n equal to 2. Um, <clears throat> so every continuous map f from d n to d n has a fixed point. So, but by this I mean that is an an x in the n such that uh, f of x is equal to x. And um, so how do we do that? Well, that's very simple. <clears throat> I first make a drawing. So I, I will anyway also just say it in words. You have to write down the formula. So let's assume we have such an f without fixed point. We want to use it to make a retraction of uh, dn to sn minus 1. We do this as follows. We define r. dn to sn minus 1 by, and now I don't write the formula as follows, by letting r of x to be um, to be um, the intersection point of the line uh, from um, x or from, say, from x to f of x with um, sn minus 1. So there will be two intersection points, no? But I take the intersection point on the side of x. So the picture is as follows. So we have here our sphere, uh, the disk. And um, here's our point x. Somewhere is the point f of x. We just, uh, you know, we are in R n. We can connect them by line. And the line will intersect the sphere in two points. And we take the one which lies nearer to x. And call it R of x. Okay? And uh, obviously, um, one has to check exercise R is continuous. By definition, R is a retraction. Because if we already are on Sn minus 1, then the inter intersection point, if x is already in Sn minus 1, then the intersection point with this line with this n minus 1 will be x. By definition, R is a retraction. And to prove that R is continuous, you have to write down a formula. You know, you know, if you write down some uh, rational expression in continuous function where the, wherever the denominator is not zero, this will be continuous. So this proves our fixed point theorem. So let me see. I have a half an hour. Okay, I want to consider one more example just to show that this... Um, we are now able to at least compute some homology groups. 
So <clears throat> so let say I call it G two be the union of two circles. Uh, which touch in a point. Okay, so this thing looks like this. And uh, in fact, these two circles are called C1. So C1 and C2 are the two circles. And here we have the intersection point, point P. And we want to compute uh, the homology of this wonderful space. <coughs> and so I, again, compute the reduced homology. Then you can compute from it the uh, non-reduced one. So we do this by using, again, the meyer viator sequence. So we said. So we have to write G2. So the, the thing which would be the easiest thing to do, which doesn't quite work, uh, because the, the assumptions don't apply, would be to take U equal to C1 and V equal to C2, and then apply the Meyer Viators to this. This doesn't quite work because, because we have assumed that U and V must be open, and they are not open here. I mean, there is a sharper form of the Meyer Viators sequence which actually would apply. And this would be okay, but we now have to use what we have. So we take u. So let uh, say. So let uh, epsilon be some small positive number. So I mean really small. So maybe if the radius of this is one, it's uh, to be smaller than one. And uh, we take uh, and um, let. Um, so E epsilon of P be a ball of radius epsilon around P. So we assume we are in, in R2 here, and we just take a very small ball. So we have here our small ball. And so, <clears throat> um, so we take U to be um, C1 union the epsilon of P uh, intersected with G2 and V to be C2 so that is we, we have this thing, and we have also this little thing here. Um, and now it's easy to see. So first thing is note. If you take u intersected v, this is just uh, this. And it's not difficult to say to see, I mean, you can do this as an exercise, that this is contractible. In fact, uh, P is a uh, neighborhood retract of it. And we just have to write down some coordinates how to pull this together. Hmm? And um, in the same way, we have that C1 is homotopy equivalent to U. So you can make a homotopy which pulls this extra part in. And uh, C2 is homotopy equivalent to V. So now we are in the situation as if we had taken um, uh, just uh, u equal to c1 and v equal to c2. 
because now we can again apply the Maivia tour sequence. Is it? Um, so we have Hn. So again, do it with reduced homology for making it easier. U intersected V goes to Hn of U plus Hn of V goes to Hn of G2. Now that's the usual thing. You have the intersection, the direct sum of the open subsets goes to the union, and then we have the boundary map. Do I need it? The delta to H uh, n minus one of U intersected V. And now <coughs> um, U intersected V is contractible, so the uh, reduced homology vanishes. Zero. This is zero. This U is homotopy equivalent to this circle, uh, C1. So this is equal to Hn of S1 plus Hn of S1. So we find this. So it's reduced. So, which means that these two are isomorphic. And we know that uh, uh, for S1, the reduced homology is Z if n is equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So, we find Hn of G2 is equal to 0 and different from 1, Z n is equal to and uh, in the usual way, we can, you know, as uh, G2 is path connected non empty for the non deduced homology, we find that uh, uh, Hn of G2 is Z if n is equal to 0 or 1. Uh, so I mean, nobody protested. I've just proven something else than what I said, no? <laughs> I mean, I have proved it's Z plus Z, and then I try to tell you it is Z, so you should complain. <clears throat> Anyway, <coughs> anyway, and then for the non-reduced one, you get uh, Z also in case n is equal to zero because it's path connected. Okay, so if um, we can see whether I can do one more example. So I do not think I will. So I want to do one more way of um, so one more application this which is about uh, attaching of cells so how what happens to the homology if you make uh, your space more complicated by adding uh, some piece uh, which looks like uh, like a disk, but connecting it along the boundary. So let's see. So so let um, D n. Well, we have a, the D n we had now a thousand times, but I. <laughs> So, so I mean, dn is the same as it always was. v zero to a n minus one in n such so the sum a i squared is equal is more or equal to one, and it contains s n minus one in the usual way, the unit sphere. And um, we now want to say what we mean by attaching a cell. So definition. So assume, so let Y be a topological space.
I mean, this is not. Um, and let um, f from Sn minus 1 to y be a continuous map. We want to somehow attach dn to y using this map so that it's kind of only fixed along the s n minus 1 given by uh, this map f. So we define y union over f dn to be, um, we take first the disjoint union of these two modulo some equivalence relation. And you know, it's with the quotient topology, the usual way. Uh, the quotient space where, you know, so obviously, so the equivalence relation is uh, induced by identifying a point in Sn minus 1 with its image point in Y. And everything else is not identified. So, so with the, so is the equivalence relation induced by um, P in Sn minus 1 is equivalent to uh, F of P in Y. So if you want to do it explicitly, what it means is if you have a point in Y which does not lie in the image of Sn minus 1, it's only the equivalence class consists only of the point Y itself. If you have a point in the end which does not lie in Sn minus 1, its equivalence class only consists of that point itself. And if you have a point in the image, then it's identified with, uh, uh, with any point which maps to it. No? So, uh, and so this gives you, a, it, you know, if you then give this thing the quotient topology from the disjoint union model of this thing, you get, uh, uh, you know, some nice topological space. <coughs> um, and you know, as a, you, know, you can somehow see, think you have Y here, and somehow this Sn minus 1 gets uh, mapped into y, and then you have to, you know, somehow, now this is not going to work, and then you somehow have to, to add this, uh, so, the, you know, uh, this dn, you know, just attaching it at, as this as a boundary. So we, I cannot really make a picture, but you have this, this thing here, which kind of sticks out and So, um, <clears throat> okay. And now uh, the statement is that again we get some uh, exact uh, sequence, which uh, so lemma. So assume we are in this situation. So let uh, f from Sn minus 1 to y be continuous. And um, we have, um, uh, we write now just yf for this uh, space here. Um, then we have a long exact sequence
and I again will do it in reduced homology because it is what works best. <coughs> um, so say HK of Sn minus 1 um, goes to, so by the map given by F to HK of Y goes to HK of YF goes to H um, K minus 1 of uh, Sn minus 1 and so on. And as I said, I wanted to do it with reduced homology. It also holds non-reduced, but with reduced it's better to use. We have such a long exact sequence. So, well, we just have to see that this is, in a suitable sense, an instance of the Meyer Virtuos sequence. But obviously, if it was just the Meyer Virtuos sequence, it would be a bit too trivial. We have to see why. So, proof. And again, I will have to cheat a little bit. <coughs> so, you know, to leave some of the more geometric sides as an exercise. So, we have we write yf equal to u intersected v. Um, so, for instance, if we write, maybe I should write it here. We certainly have a map. Um, or maybe write here j is the map from the n to uh, y union over f the n, which just sends a point here to its equivalence class. No? OK. So um, this is a completely fine map. We see that. Um, if we, for instance, now take um, u, so we write it as union like that with u equal to, uh, say, um, the image under j of the ball with radius 1 half. So this I just mean, you know, so which one do I want? It's 1 to xn in uh, uh, dn such that the sum of the xi squared is equal to 1 half, smaller equal to 1 half. So this is just the sum. Uh, Subset, and I think I have to take the open ball, okay? So it's smaller than one half. Because these are supposed to be open subsets. And V, I just take the whole thing minus the image of the center of the disk. Okay, so we have the point zero in the disk. We just take away this one point, make a little hole into this thing. Okay, now clearly uh, yf is a union of these two sets and they are open. Okay, so we can apply the Myriatos sequence. Um, but there are a few things we can see. So j, if we restrict j to uh, to this, uh, this disk, it's a homeomorphism, no? because we just, uh, you know, there's nothing we identify once we are inside the disk. The identification is only on the boundary. So we have that this is homeomorphic to just the ball with this, and so it is contractible. So we have U is contractible. Uh, 
And what did it more difficult to see is that um, V is a homotopy equivalent to Y itself. Because if you think of it, if once you have taken one point, you can again kind of, you know, <coughs> after all, you know, I mean, one would have to write down this in formulas, and you, uh, this would be a, an exercise, but, um, you know, you have this disk, the n, you have taken away one point, so the origin, you can certainly kind of retract this to the, to the boundary by just moving out along uh, the radii. And you can make a homotopy uh, equivalence of this thing with y by uh, taking the identity on y in this map on the n and then taking the identification. And I claim you still get a nice homotopy. This you would have to work this out. So, um, so exercise proof this. So, but once we have this, uh, the statement is clear. <clears throat> because again, this is a retraction, so nothing happens on the boundary, and the boundary is, is the only place where we have identified things. So it's... Uh, you know, in, in this picture, which I just wiped out, where we have this kind of something like a, a bubble on this thing, we just make a hole here and we can contract it and then we are left only with the, with the thing we had before. So anyway, once we believe this, it's all very simple. We apply the Maivieto sequence which says that if we take HK of um, U intersected V, this map maps to HK of U plus HK of V maps to HK of this wonderful space to HK minus 1 of U intersected V. And we are again in the same situation. This space is contractible. Um, no, no, no. Okay, so it's correct, but so U intersected, ah, so what is, I haven't said what is U intersected V. Now, look at uh, the intersection of these two. We take uh, this ball and we take out this point. So this just looks precisely again like a smaller disk taking out one point. So that's homotopy equivalent to SN minus one. No? n minus 1. So this is uh, just the k homology of s n minus 1. Um, u and v are, so u is contractible. Yeah. So if I take, uh, so it means all the reduced homology is 0. This is zero plus, um, and we have seen that V is homotopic equivalent to, to Y. And um, then we have HK of YF. And then we have HK minus one of S N minus one. Okay. Yeah, now I have very, so this is an example. So which, uh, so it somehow tells us that we have a way if we, for instance, build our space by successively adding such pieces, uh, we have a way to compute the homology in an inductive way. 
What? What? Where? Ah, yeah, yeah, certainly. So we, we write YF as a union of two open subsets, yes. They, you know, we want to apply the Maya Viator sequence and that is by uh, doing that. And it was a misprint, misprint, but U intersected V, here it is, U intersected V is uh, homotopy equivalent to a sphere. Yeah, so now there is no uh, further time. So one application of this result, which I obviously will not be able to give you, um, because I first also would have to define this thing, is that uh, one can now uh, prove, for instance, so you, um, I will, if I'm in particular bad mood, I will make this an exercise, but we will have to see. Um, <clears throat> so we have, um, we can look at PNC. So this is the set of all, um, say, so this is Rn plus one, Cn plus one without the origin divided by some equivalence relation where we have that um, uh, if we have uh, some n tuple A0 to An is equivalent to B0, Bn. So an n, n plus one tuple of complex numbers is uh, equivalent to another one if and only if um, you know this vector is just a multiple of the other by a non-zero constant so there exists a lambda in C without zero uh, such that um, say a zero so an is equal to lambda b0 until lambda bn. So we have this space. And one thing, there exists a lambda, lambda lambda, in a, a, a non-zero complex number lambda, such that if I multiply this vector by lambda, I get the other vector. This is how I, so, the, this is just the space of complex lines in uh, Cn plus 1. And uh, what one can prove with this theorem, or also in other ways, but one can prove, so this is, a, you know, can show. And this would be, but it is a bit complicated. And I, I might make it an exercise if I give you enough hints, but I'm not yet sure. Uh, namely, that uh, H n of um, uh, cpn, so, so hk of cpn is equal to zero if k is odd. It's also zero if k is bigger than 2n. And it's z uh, if uh, k is even and uh, mm, zero to k to two n. Okay. So here one would have a space where it is uh, a little bit more complicated. So one case where you can check it is, for instance, if you take uh, CP, you know, just to see that whether this might be so true, CP0 is just a point, and that's okay. You get just Z for K equals zero, otherwise you get zero. And CP1, it's not so obvious, but uh, one can prove that this is isomorphic to S2, not S1. S1 is over, if you have R, we are here over the complex numbers. And then again, uh, you will find that this is true. But in general, you get this. So we have now a space where there are also a few more homology groups which are non-zero. 
But anyway, <coughs> a much harder exercise would be to do the real projective space when the answer is also much more complicated. And, uh, but that, I think, would <laughs> is almost impossible. Anyway. Okay, so that's, um, I mean, I don't know. So that's maybe all I want to say now. So I, I have tried to uh, introduce some of the main results and do some examples. I mean, we had very little time, so we didn't cover, very, didn't get very far. Um, but anyway, I hope it is enough to at least, uh, you know, get some impression and to be able to compute some examples and some applications. If one, I mean, algebraic topology is a big field, so if one really wants to study it, then one, you know, you know if you look, for instance, at the book of Hatcher, which I partially used, I think I covered about uh, uh, maybe 25 out of 500 pages. So, <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> you know, that's it, but it's just the first, uh, first impression. But, but I mean, it is, uh, you know, we have seen some of the methods. Okay, uh, maybe I, I stop then, and then we will see. Thanks. What? No, no. You What? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's one thing. I, I don't know, this may not. Uh, um, <clears throat> I mean, algebraic topology is not only about that. So, I mean, it's uh, one thing one can study whether uh, two spaces are homeomorphic or, you know, you can also see, after all, we have proven that um, um, homology is a, uh, is a, invariant under homotopy, so it's not really about homeomorphic, but even if they're homotopy equivalent, you get the same homology, so you can decide that. But, um, you know, you can, sometimes you can prove that certain things are impossible, like with this uh, Brouwer fixed point theorem and so on, because you, you can do certain things. It's not just about things being homeomorphic. But in some sense, you, know, you, you can always think like that. If you want to decide anything in topology or in any other subject, you can also always reformulate this as a statement about, you know, maps. So, you know, about continuous maps or something like that. And um, so the homology, you know, if you have a continuous map, it will give you a map on homology. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, it's impossible that such a map exists because the homology groups do not fit. And so you can see that certain, Certain things are impossible because you uh, cannot do that. And sometimes you also kind of can find the converse. And then one thing which I did not say is that homology actually has something to do with the fact what the space looks like. I mean, it's not clear here, but I, I had said in the very beginning something that, uh, you know, <clears throat> if you have, a, you know, the zeroth homology tells you how many pieces there are. So you can really see it. The first homology tells you something about kind of certain kind of holes. I mean, you can kind of imagine that if you, you know, can make a, a simplex around the hole in your space, then it is a boundary if you can somehow fill it up in the space. And so if you cannot, so you get non-zero homology if there will be a hole. And there's some way how you can make this kind of precise. And uh, <clears throat> there are also other things. There is a cohomology, which is dual to homology. It's uh, not much more difficult than homology, but it has some extra features. And one of the things you have with home, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> this then is, for instance, also related to, um, you know, the RAM cohomology. It somehow, it turns out to be the same as the RAM cohomology, something with differential forms. And, you know, the RAM cohomology, for one thing you could say, it's just another way to compute cohomology, which is more or less the same as homology. But in fact, you know, the RAM cohomology is about solving differential equations. So, you know, so it means homology 
or cohomology tells you something about solving differential equations. You can, by computing certain, you know, doing certain computations in algebraic uh, uh, topology, you can decide whether certain differential equations can be solved or not. Okay, certain partial differential equations or manifolds. And there are other things. So often, when you have some space, you can make some construction on top of the space, and this construction will give you a certain homology class. And so you can decide, you know, and then maybe there are some reasons why this cohomology class cannot exist or cannot do what you see. And so you see that this construction that you would like to make cannot be there. And there, so there are many cases. It's not just about two things being homeomorphic. That's just the kind of coarsest thing. Okay, but it's kind of a more universal tool to, you always want to associate some groups to your question and some homomorphism between the groups to the question. And then you have translated your problem into a different one. 